What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we're going to be talking about Kenny Galladay. He was recently listed as a potential cut candidate by Pro Football Focus. I think we all know the writing is on the wall, and the Giants will more than likely be releasing Kenny Galladay this offseason. Now, that makes a lot of sense, considering, well, the lack of production that he's had over the past couple of years since signing with the New York Giants in 2021 as their big money, big splash, free agent. I can't lie. I really wanted him. I know many of you did, too. But he never lived up to the expectations that were set out for him in that 2021 offseason with that four-year, $72 million deal. Yeah, four years, $72 million. Whole lot of money for Kenny Galladay and not a lot of production. It's really unfortunate to say, but his time with the Giants looks like it's coming to an end. So we're going to go ahead and discuss how much money the New York Giants can save by cutting Kenny Galladay and what they could maybe do with that money, where it could go, and how they could set themselves up to have a really solid offseason with that extra chunk of change that they can get from cutting Kenny Galladay. But before we dive into all of that, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode and subscribe to the channel if you are new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. And let's go ahead without further ado and get into the Kenny Galladay contract fiasco because like I said, four years, $72 million is a lot of money to pay a player who throughout his Giants career has played in only 26 games with 43 receptions, 602 yards, and one touchdown. The one touchdown coming in the final week of this year's regular season against backups. Well, he for the backups because he was a backup, essentially. And that's unfortunate to say that Kenny Galladay was signed to be the Giants' number one receiving option and became a backup in his second year with the team. So, that's not good, obviously, but to have one touchdown across those two years and only 81 receiving yards across 12 games this season, like I said, the writing is on the wall. It looks like Kenny Galladay is on his way out of here, but how much money will they get from cutting him? Well, if they cut him pre-June 1st, which is the most likely outcome, the Giants will have to incur a penalty of $14.7 million in dead cap. A lot of money in dead cap, but they will free up $6.7 million in salary cap space. So that's a pretty significant chunk, chunk of change, like I mentioned, and that money can be used to do a whole lot of different things. Now, $6.7 million doesn't look like too much at face value when you're talking about NFL contracts and the NFL salary cap, but the Giants can do a lot with that money considering the salary cap space is always fluid. It's always flexible. And when you sign a player, let's say, for example, the Giants signed a player to a contract with an average annual value of $6.7 million per year. Okay, well, just because they're getting paid roughly 6.7 per year doesn't mean that all 6.7 of that is going to them that season because you can backload contracts. So really, you could probably get two $6.7 million deals under your salary cap by cutting Kenny Galladay for $6.7 million, if that makes sense. So the Giants have a lot of money that they can clear up. We've talked about Leonard Williams in the past on this channel, how the Giants could potentially consider maybe releasing him, maybe restructuring or extending him. I think that's the road that they're going to go. I think they're going to go ahead and extend Leonard Williams. But with Kenny Galladay, there's no room for extension. There's not really much room for restructures. The Giants don't seem to want him around. They phased him out of the offense really early on in the 2022 regular season, and he didn't contribute much at all throughout the season and definitely not into the postseason. So the writing is on the wall. So the Giants cutting him before June 1st will save them $6.7 million. That will give them the opportunity to spend some of that money during free agency. But what if they decide, okay, we don't really want the money for now, but we want it for later. Let's cut him post June 1st. Okay, so then they're going to save a lot more money that way. Now, if they cut Kenny Galladay post June 1st, they can save $13.5 million against the cap. They'll only have a penalty of $7.9 million. So you're pretty much saving double in money in cap savings by cutting Kenny Galladay after June 1st. But what are the pros to that for keeping him throughout the offseason and then cutting him in June right before training camp? In my opinion, that's not a good idea. I understand they'll save a lot more money there, but who are they going to sign with that money? At that point, the draft is already completed. Free agency is long gone by June. There's just no point in holding on to Kenny Galladay so you save that extra money and do nothing with it. That's what, how I, I feel about that. I know a lot of Giants fans will read about it or hear it and then see, you know, $13.5 in cap savings. That's big-time money, and it certainly is. I mean, that can get you a whole lot in the NFL. You could get a starting real good wide receiver to replace Kenny Galladay with that money. You know, if you trade for – we've talked on the channel about trading for a guy like Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins, that $13 million goes – a long way towards getting one of those guys, but that's all the way in June. And you're not really going to be able to make a deal like that in June because 
that's when teams are finalizing their camp rosters and getting ready to go into the, the 2023 regular season. So there's really no way that the Giants are going to hold on to Galladay that long just to cut him then. If they do, then sure, they're going to save a lot of money. But if you want the Giants to spend money in free agency, have that right now money, they're going to have to cut him sooner than June 1st in order to apply that money to free agency. Because again, by June, all those guys who become free agents in March, they're long gone. They're going to be signing their contracts and preparing to play for their new teams. But let's say that the Giants say, okay, Galladay, we're going to give you a chance to fight and play in training camp and see if you can win uh, an, a, another opportunity with this team. Now, that's a possibility that the Giants aren't done with Kenny Galladay. And maybe the writing isn't necessarily as clear on the wall as we thought it was. Okay, so let's imagine a scenario where the Giants go into the training camp and they're like, Galladay, go out there, try to win that job back. And then he fails and he doesn't get that job back. Okay, then you take that $13.5 million and you cut him before preseason ends. That makes sense. And that'll be a nice cap saving. But then again, what are you going to do with that money other than just roll it over into next year? And that's not necessarily the worst thing to do. Rolling money into next year, having some money cleared up on your salary cap space for a potential midseason signing. Those are good ideas. But again, if you're a Giants fan listening to this and you want the Giants to go into free agency, find a new starting center or a new starting guard or someone else on the outside cornerback position, you're going to want to cut Kenny Galladay sooner rather than later. Now, there are other possibilities to get Kenny Galladay's contract off the books, right? You could trade Kenny Galladay pre-June 1st. You'll save $11 million there, but no one is trading for Kenny Galladay. I want Giants fans to just get that out of their heads because no team is going to try and take on this contract with a salary cap hit of $21 million for the next two seasons. A ridiculous amount of money. He also has a void year attached to his contract in 2025 worth $3.4 million. So you're talking about a three-year financial commitment to a player who had 81 total receiving yards in the 2022 season. Again, the Giants don't want to make that commitment, and nobody else in the NFL wants to make that commitment. So do not expect the Giants to find a trade partner for Kenny Galladay. The likely outcome here is that they cut him probably ahead of free agency. I think it'll get done sooner rather than later, and Galladay will have an opportunity to go out there, find a new team, negotiate a new contract, and maybe sign a one-year prove-it deal with another squad. But that squad is not likely to be the New York Giants. I don't think he stays here for the 2023 season. Again, it's possible the Giants gave him another chance, but I don't see it happening. So let's talk about what they can do with $6.7 million. Now, again, I kind of mentioned it and alluded to it. The interior of the offensive line can totally be shored up through $6.7 million. You can absolutely, with that money, find a quality starter on your line. Now, I don't think you're getting any Pro Bowl or All-Pro level players. However, someone who's decent, quality to play 16 or 17 games for you in a season, you can find that for $6.7 million. And then here's the other thing that a lot of Giants fans seem to forget. $6.7 million goes very far when you're trying to allocate that money towards a contract extension, right? Saquon Barkley, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is about to get $35 million per season. Now, that's a lot of money. That $6.7 million will go a long way towards making that deal happen. And when you're looking at Saquon Barkley, who's getting somewhere between 12 and 16, well, that $6.7 million makes up a good portion of it, almost 40% of that contract, depending on how large it is. So that's also a lot of money to go a long way. So I think when you look at that money, the $6.7 million, you can apply it to free agents, sure up that offensive line. You can definitely go out there, just put it towards those contract extensions for your big-name players. And then there's another option for the Giants, which is improve their depth. And I've been saying this a lot on the channel recently, if you've been viewing, that the Giants need to improve their depth. And $6.7 million, that can get you backup linebacker, backup cornerback, backup center, backup guard, backup guard. Like, it can get you at least – you can probably sign – Six to seven players with $6.7 million who are at that $1 million or less range, you know, right near that veteran league minimum for salaries. And if you want more high quality depth, okay, well, look at what the Giants spent on Tyrod Taylor last year, pretty comparable to that $6.7 million price range for a backup quarterback. So if you want quality backup offensive line play or tight ends play or receiver play, whatever it is, you can get some solid guys for about three to four million. So you can probably sign two really quality backups on this team. And we know that the Giants need depth in a lot of places like the interior of the defensive line as well. We know they need starters on the offensive line, but on the defensive line, you love what you have there with Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence. Those two players are phenomenal, but you do need to add a little bit more depth in there, right? 
I mean, behind Dexter Lawrence, when Dexter Lawrence wasn't on the field in the divisional round of the postseason, it was a disaster against the run. The Giants could not stop the run without Dexter Lawrence, so they need to add depth there. And then again, linebacker is a huge position of need for the Giants. $6.7 million, that might be enough to get a guy like David Long, who all of you viewers of the channel know, we're huge fans of him right here on Fireside Giants. We like David Long from the Tennessee Titans, Thinks he think he makes a lot of sense for the Giants in free agency, and $6.7 million might be enough to get him because his annual salary is probably under seven. So I like that idea. I think that would be great for Big Blue. And again, David Long, I'm going to keep pounding the table on him. We're going to keep breaking him down right here on Fireside Giants. But that $6.7 million pretty much gets him. So I would absolutely be willing to sacrifice Kenny Galladay in order to get a quality starting middle linebacker in the New York Giants defense. That's something they definitely need. Now, then again, another thing they need is wide receiver talent. And you may argue, why cut a wide receiver when you need a wide receiver? Well, because this one's not good enough and he's not playing up to his uh, salary, right? That money for Kenny Galladay is honestly ridiculous. At the time, it seemed like an overpay. It seemed like a lot of money, but it was a worthwhile overpay because the Giants needed a WR1 because that's what they thought they were getting. That's not what they got. Kenny Galladay did not reach WR1 status with the New York Giants, unfortunately. Now, let's go over restructures because I know I said it's not really an option for the Giants because they want to get out of this contract, but it technically is possible for them to restructure his salary and keep him on the team for the foreseeable future. Again, I don't think they do that because they want to release him and probably just move on from Galladay, give him an opportunity to start fresh elsewhere. But a restructure, they could save $11.28 million with a contract restructure this year and $8.4 million against the cap next year in savings. Now, if you want to get really wacky, really crazy, the Giants can go ahead and uh, extend Kenny Galladay, and they will free up $13 million this year and $13.5 million next year. Now, again, that one's definitely not going to happen. The most likely solution here is that the Giants cut him, save that $6.7 million this year, and then you're going to go into 2024, and $14.6 million is saved by cutting him as well with only $6.8 million in dead cap. But there is that void year in 2025 worth $3.4 million. So the Giants will have to pay him that regardless. That's dead money for sure. But again, I think that he gets cut sooner rather than later. The New York Giants are going to want to free up a little bit of money heading into free agency so that they can shore up the roster, find some quality backup pieces, improve their depth, and maybe get a starting player on offense or defense. I Again, I'm going to keep saying it. Linebacker. They got to go out there and sign a linebacker. But yeah, that's pretty much your roundup on the Kenny Galladay contract. And let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. Are you ready to say goodbye, Kenny G, and see if the Giants can use that money better place to elsewhere? I'm sure that all of you are, but let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. And again, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode and subscribe to Fireside Giants if you are new to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. We did a live stream last night with Tommy G from Tommy's Takes. It was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. Shout out to Toa Zuri. Thank you so much for the donation. And thanks for tuning in. As always, Tuto and everybody else tuning in to Fireside Giants. Thank you so much for your love and support. It's much appreciated over here. Again, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants. Thank you.